Greetings and welcome to our video titled, and the word is God, word trickery and the art of manipulation. Thanks for taking your time to allow us to share our thoughts and opinions with you. My name is Pretty Boy Blue, I am the shithouse scholar, makeshift pseudo philosopher of sorts for our Lord's Manor, here at Draco and Company. I have no college degrees nor do I want any, Jesus, nor any of his twelve disciples had degrees and billions have followed his words. Not saying I'm Jesus, because I'm much much more prettier than that man, but more importantly I would never sacrifice myself for anyone else's sins but my own. I'm just saying most of that college degree bullshit is overrated child's play, I'm more in the realm of gorgeousness of my man Saint Germain. What do you think? Remember Jesus was Jewish. He was the king of the Jews, which means he most likely didn't have my pretty blue eyes and my pale pasty white skin. Please like if you think I'm prettier. Call me shallow but my hollow ego is thoroughly dependent on your acceptance and a little likey likey can go a long way. Yeah baby. Yeah baby, yeah! Firstly we would like to thank all of our current subscribers. Even though we're fairly certain that 90% of them are not subscribed because they actually like the content but more so subscribed because they are just keeping a watchful eye over us. And they wish nothing positive, but to do us harm. Anyways, to any of you who aren't, we send our love. And to all of you who are, our hate. Enough of that bullshit and let's get to brass tacked. We're going to start this video with some of our own perceptual content on how powerful words are and how they are currently being used on the sheeple of the dumbed down society that we were born into and therefore have to deal with. But first a word from one of our own personal heroes, our man George Carlin. Rest in peace our brother. All our love. But our presentation we are going to share a portion of a video we found mentally stimulating and strongly associated with this subject of word trickery. From a YouTube channel called Lifting the Veil. We don't know much about the channel however we think the guy running the channel's name is Cullen. Out of respect we'll only give a portion of the video and if you are interested you can pursue via the link provided. We will leave various links to his social media outlets in the description below and now on with the show. Are you into the holy bible, you know, that bible that is full of holes, therefore, making it holy, then there is a verse in John 1, 1, and it reads, in the beginning, was the word, and the word was God, and the word is God. Try not to overthink this verse making it some almighty enigmatic ancient riddle. Simply put, it means exactly what it says. Words are quote end quote God, because that is how powerful they are to the human psyche. There is a never ending game of push and pull being played between your conscious mind and your unconscious mind. They are both completely dependent on one another however they do not completely cooperate in operation with each other. Your unconscious mind is like a four-year-old child who takes everything literally therefore your conscious mind is responsible for making sure that whatever you allow in is truth to the utmost. Your conscious mind is a policing mechanism of sorts however your unconscious mind has the greatest capability to destroy yourself from within. Your unconscious mind is the careless carefree consumer with an infinite source of money to spend. In this specific case money would equal energy. Your conscious mind is the quality control center, the always vigilant drill instructor who knows the fact that when the machine breaks down we break down. The machine obviously being the conscious mind, and we, meaning, your holy trinity, your mind body and soul. 1. What's the difference between understanding versus understanding versus overstanding? These words are all associated with positioning. When you understand, you stand under someone else's authority. When you overstand you stand over someone else as the author. When you understand you take the position of sovereign neutrality, position of being personally competent, capable, and comprehensive. 2. What's the difference between dependence and independence? Would you rather be independence or out of dependence? Would being out of dependence equal freedom? If so then how does independence equal freedom? When the creators of the United States government, many of whom were staunch loyalists to the crown, signed the Declaration of Independence, are you sure that they didn't sign a declaration to be independents? If they sign a declaration of freedom then why did they not just call it a declaration of freedom? Also, 
One must remember that one can declare themselves anything, it does not necessarily make it a fact. I could declare myself King Lord Ruler of the New World. As a matter of fact I think I am going to declare that right now I am going to declare myself King Lord Ruler of the New World. Just to make my point. Did I make my point? How many of you out there agree that I am now King Lord Ruler of the New World? Then as the new King Lord Ruler of the World, I dictate demand that all of you, like, subscribe, share, and comment on all of my videos from this moment forth or I shall unleash my wrath and fury upon you all. 3. What's the difference between liberty versus freedom? Liberty is not freedom and freedom is not liberty. Liberty is granted by a master. Liberty is what military personnel is granted by their masters. Military personnel sign contracts to enter into voluntary servitude for special benefits and privileges. Liberty being one of those. Once you join the military corporation they literally own you. 4. What's the difference between the word serve and servicing? We always hear the masters of the United States Corporation say we are here to serve the American people our question is who are you serving them to? For example, waiters are in the business of servicing customers by serving them food. Shouldn't the masters of the United States Corporation be servicing the American people? However, if they were servicing the American people would they not longer not be masters? Serve and servicing are two distinct words with two distinctly different performances. Masters would serve the American sheeple to their overlords. However, on the flip side public servants would be servicing the American people this leads us to the difference between the words. 5. What's the difference between officials versus public servants? Officials differ from public servants. Officials do not have to service they only have to dictate. Officials, with the root word deriving from, office, are granted the authority to dictate to the sheeple the decisions created by the office. Officials serve sheeple to their masters. However, one could be an official public servant, recognized by the office of the people, to officially service the public by being the public's servant. 6. What's the difference between law enforcement versus peace officers? Firstly you do not enforce a law, however, you do enforce policies. Law has inherent value, the law already exists, the law is the undisputable difference between right and wrong, even children without any formal education know the difference between right and wrong, almost all people, in general, follow the law, natural law, the law can only be enforced via peace officers. Today's law enforcers are nothing more than policy enforcers, hence the name police, police being the root word of policy. Therefore if we as a society did not take part in this mental manipulation then they should be correctly named policy enforcers. Now, you must ask yourself who creates policies? Corporations. The US government is the parent corporation for more than 65,000 child corporations in its corporate family. United States Incorporated is the parent corporation for every corporation and every federal, state, county, and local municipality operating on American soil. Every court on American soil is a foreign instrumentality of United States Incorporated. Every court on American soil is a foreign vessel in dry dock. Every court on American soil is a quasi-public private for-profit international trading company. All crimes are commercial and all crimes are against the state. Every crime has a commercial value in these states, as in the state of states, that would include any of the 50 states, reaps rewards from all harm inflicted to the American people. 7. What's the difference between enforce versus enforce? The first is already established the second is making an attempt. Also, the letter E in the word enforce is the fifth letter of the alphabet. We won't go into the meaning of that in this video. Also question. How can indisputable and undisputable mean the same thing? If you are in dispute then how can being indisputable oppose the fact that you are in dispute? 8. What's the difference between justice versus injustice? Why is the word justice always pronounced to sound like just us, when the last three letters ICE should sound like ICE? How does an unjust act equate to being injustice, unless one is insinuating that unjustness is actually justice? 9. What's the difference between citizen versus citizen? Why does the word citizen sounds like citizen, 
If ignorance is bliss and Zen is a state of bliss, then do the people really want to sit in the blissful state? Created by the state of states? Think of how many words that start with a C that sounds like a K. Cat, career, cause, car, candle capital, cum, computers, cocaine, carp line, coordinate, carbon, carton, case, catcher, Kate, Catholic, cubic, cargo, carrot, cricket, corpse, corporation, capacitor, Cassidy, and on and on and on. However citizen is conveniently pronounced the sound likes it in Zen. 10. What's the difference between state versus state? Can you state the state of statelessness that you previously stated in your last statement about your physical state, due to the fact you are without a state which led to your current state in which you have just stated? And also please state for the record what state you are currently residing in, as well as your mental and emotional state, due to your current state in that state? And please make sure that all statements herein are stated as fact because any and all statements that you state if deemed by the state to be fraud, will be a crime against the state and the state can and will prosecute. 12. What's the difference between Marine Corps versus Marine Corps? All of my life I have always heard from anyone who's ever said it the Marines being referred to as the Marine Corps, and never the Marine Corps. 13. What's the difference between corporation versus corporation? As you may know, United States Corporation has given every corporation in America the same, if not more, rights than living people of flesh and blood. A corporation is a dead fictitious entity. An oration is a speech delivered in a high flow nor pompous manner and a corpse is obviously a dead entity. So a corporation is an arrogant pompous dead person. And your masters can hide behind these dead fictitious entities. They can also make you dance to the beat of their drum. They can make you consciously and consensually give up any and all rights and personal autonomy and or sovereignty to be a member of their club, where you may be granted special benefits and privileges. 14. What's the difference between person versus people? Person is a word created by your masters to refer to their corporations. People can also be called a person because every one of the people carries is a person with them, often referred to as their strawman. However people can never refer to corporations and corporations can never deem themselves as people. The old adage a government for the people by the people is nothing more than an old saying that bears no significant substance in today's United States and should be changed, or rather modified, to bear some resemblance of reality. It should now be stated a government for the person by the person. United States vs United Kingdom of States United States Incorporated is a foreign for-profit business owned and operated by private parties stationed overseas. And Americans, meaning people born on American soil, are American natives, much like the Native Americans, and are considered, in many respects, enemies of the state. The United Kingdom of States would be the more correct verbiage when referring to United States and the special relationship that it shares with the United Kingdom and the Vatican. Also United States is a corporation just like General Motors and McDonald's. You never hear anyone refer to General Motors as the General Motors, nor McDonald's as the McDonald's, therefore United States should never be referred to as the United States. Furthermore the American people should start referring to United States exactly for what it is, and start calling a spade a spade, and referring to United States United States Incorporated. 16. What's the difference between capital letters versus upper and lower case letters? Capital has nothing to do with letters and everything to do with business and finance. You started be taught the word capital letters, died the fact that your masters have been perpetrating identity theft on you since the day you were born. Your strawman who bears the same name as you, has a capitalized version have your name, that's because your name has been financially capitalized on. 17. What's the difference between knowing versus believing thinking? Is it not odd that there is a rule in English that states I before E except after C? And that very rule alone puts the word lie in the middle of the word believe. So should one assume and or conclude that at the center of every belief there is a lie? Remember, to think does not mean that one knows. 18. What's the difference between God bless you versus may God grant you, God be less you? I would rather that God grant me than be less me. 19. What's the difference between assume versus conclude? You may have already heard this one in relationship to the word assume. 
to assume me is to make an ass out of you, you, and me now going off of assume, would the word masses equal a multitude of asses? 20. What's the difference between American traitors versus United States traitors? American traitors are all of the people working for United States Corporation in their current capacity of negative performance. United States traitors are any people that are working for United States Corporation in a capacity in which they are actually performing a positive performance for the American people and 21. What's the difference between you and you? A you is a female sheep. Why would you refer to yourself as a female sheep? Who designed this language and why would they allow this to take place? Also, is it not strange that Jesus is referred to as the shepherd of all of the lost sheep? One would have to ask themselves is there any correlation like this with the Jewish language? How about the Arabic language is there another language that literally has the same exact sound, even though it's a different spelling? Because this all is about speaking through your conscious into your unconscious mind. So why do the word for sheep and you have the exact same sound signature? And for the grand finale closing we would like to use these two words as a perfect illustration to the primary gist of this video. 22. The difference between informed versus uninformed. Now, if independence equals freedom, then shouldn't it be an unindependent? Thank you and have a good day. Oh if it's not too much of a hassle like, share, subscribe, and do all that happy horse shit type of stuff, you would really make me happy. Why do I feel like I'm going to start crying right now? I love you guys. Hast thou fallen for the eldest trick in the scroll? How do I even begin? Is it by telling you about how we've been unwittingly cast into the mold of ancient spells of our modern spelling? Cast just like a mold, or perhaps like a net, while caught like fish in the net of spells and spelling that have been cast, thus sentencing us to life sentences and the curses of cursive, which are just terms, like serving a prison term? So we've been sentenced to the wards of these words, which can be deadly as swords if misunderstood. Or perhaps you missed my understanding of my terms or the sibyls of my syllables, or even the ancient rites of modern writing. We languish in our languid language in anguish ever since the ancient times of the Anglish Angus and the phony phonetic phonics of the ancient Phoenician Phoenix. You think English is easy? Sometimes I think English should be committed to an asylum for the verbally insane. In what language do people recite at a play and play at a recital? Ship by truck and send cargo by ship. Have noses that run and feet that smell. How can a slim chance and a fat chance be the same, while a wise man and a wise guy are opposites? You have to marvel at the unique lunacy, or the lunar sea, of language in which your house burns up as it burns down, in which you fill in a form by filling it out, and in which an alarm goes off by going on. English was created by the ancient Phoenician phonics of the phony Phoenician phoenix and it reflects the creativity and cunning genius of the human race, in which, of course, isn't a race at all, unless you're just another rat caught in the daily maze of the rat race of this human race against one another. We draw money from our banks, which are the edges of a river, which flows in currents to the sea, which is why it's called currency, because our cash flows like pyroclastic ash flows, to the sea, which is why we can trace back the roots of all modern trade to the ancient Phoenician trade roots, and why our mundane weekdays seem to keep us in a perpetually weak days, until we are so weakened that we barely make it to the weekend. So each day we actually awake routinely in the morning, or is it the Monday morning ritual conversely conversing a morning at a wake for the dead and thus the Bible speaks that the dead shall walk the earth or so it appears that they already are without even knowing it just by the strange language of which they know not the true origins of what their words mean in etymology and thus the significance of the